I'm Sylvester Jackson Carrara and the managing director of UKC Uruimbekaji Cooperative that is steering these hydroponic fodder technologies in Rwanda. So we are implementing a program with UNDP, UNDP being the sponsor of these kits to small households in Rwanda who are practicing zero grazing, uh, keeping of animals in their homes. So this structure of three meters by four meters enables farmers to get weekly, actually it's daily animal feed production that is fed to the animals. And the, these products or fodder are produced in seven days to feed the cows. So when these farmers cultivate this from the grains locally available, these are the grains, these are the maize grains, we have the wheat grains, and uh, we get good feed and we balance rationality to the animals, feeding the animals based on the science of the body weight. The grains are, are, are taken and sprouted, and they are only irrigated using very special irrigation techniques. This is foggy or misting irrigation. And there is recycling of the water, because the trays are aligned in a very diagonal manner. The water, excess water passes through here to this floor, passes down to this one, and the last one is collected along this gutter, and that water collected there can be recycled. Same thing applies to here. So this unit has a capacity of producing at least two tons per week, and uh, very, very effective to feed 10 cows daily. So this clean food is very nutritious with crude protein, and the dry matter that the animals need to produce more milk. And the more milk that the farmers get means more revenues and increasing their household levels. We also have the water collection from the rooftops, which are used in getting the water for irrigation here, and also the domestic water used for the households. In addition to that, we have the solar panels that are powering this type of irrigation, the misting, and this is clean energy. And in addition to that, these households have also been given the biogas digesters, which get the animal dung, put them in the digesters, and then they get clean energy for cooking, which is very resourceful to eradicate the respiratory diseases that these uh, women get in the kitchen while cooking, and also managing the environment. And lastly, the, the, apart from the biogas, we also have the excreta from the biogas, which is the animal dung manure that are taken and collected and taken to the field and increasing the productivity, food crop productivity. So there's food security, there's also animal husbandry within a very limited space, and this is going to create the development of the small uh, livelihoods of people moving from the low level to the high level and raising their income. So as the development of partners in Rwanda, we are blending our efforts together so that the livelihoods of those small households could come up and, uh, and improve their economic benefits as well as conserving the environment. So this kind of fodder, for example, this is the fifth day. In the next two days, it will be fed to the cows. When you harvest, you roll. This is a bale that is very clean, and you roll until the other end. Then you take it to the animals, and you just clean the, the tree. And that becomes a very good source of fiber and clean energy for the animals, as well as the crude protein for the animals. This is wheat fodder, and this is maize fodder. So you see, this is a one-day sprouted maize shoots. These ones are becoming the leaves, the green part of the leaves. And on the lower side, when the grains are compacted, they rise and in seven days you get the green feed that is to this level and this level which are fed to the animals. And the animals consume everything, including the roots and the leaves. Everything. There's no waste. Everything. 100%. And this is irrigation. The misting that you can see, it's overhead water droplets are reduced to very small mist and the plants get even distribution of water therefore uniformity in the sprouting and this is water efficiency so if you look at, at the physical outlook of this greenhouse structure this is the black shade net it's 50 percent specification and it re really reduces the high intensity of the sunlight which is going to leading to the loss of water by the plants, especially in the dry season or when it's very, very hot. It's also poured, it has some small pores, which allows air in and out of the greenhouse. Therefore, this environment here is well controlled and very conducive for the sprouting of the green fodder. This outer structure is metallic and it gives strength against any shocks from the harsh weather outside, whether it's very heavy rain or very strong wind, this structure is very strong and reliable. On this floor, we've just covered it with plastic cover. This is to minimize any uh, soil uh, uh, contact 
and, and also uh, hygiene when you are doing our production and more so uh, enabling easy cleaning when we need to do so. These aluminum trays that we use to produce this fodder are used uh, for sprouting. They have high resistance against mold and uh, there is not any rust. Uh, besides that, there is good flow of water uh, along and that's why you see there is uniformity in the sprouting. Uh, and in addition, it's very light. So when you are harvesting, you can easily pick a tree and take it to the animal crawl without any difficulties. This is very resilient and strong. And then these are the shelves. These shelves are of metallic structure and they provide base where these trays that we use to produce our fodder are kept and arranged. So there is no any interference in terms of water flow when you are irrigating and voluminous production when a farmer needs to, to, to do so. As we get out of this internal structure of the greenhouse, I'm taking out you round. This is the incubation. This is where the initial stage of fodder production starts. And in here, we have a, a small space whereby a farmer can get the grains and sprout them in these plastic containers. These plastic containers are readily available, so we buy them and cut them and use them for initial preparation of the grains before they are sprouted inside the greenhouse. And then you have the patches which hold them from the ground. That efficiates the productivity of the initial sprouting of the grains. Then after four hours, it is taken to the greenhouse. In conjunction to that, we have this water rain harvesting. These are the tanks and UNDP supplied each household with 8,500 liters tanks. These tanks provide water that are used in the irrigation. We also have the same water that are used for domestic use by the households. So it's a, it's a complementarity. And all this collection of water is good use of the water from the rooftops during the rain harvest season. And during the summer season, farmers are using the same water for their home and for their production. And on the rooftops of these houses are installed with solar panels. These panels provide the lighting for the home use by the small holes farmers, as well as powering the irrigation inside the greenhouse structure. We have the solar panel here installed, which controls the power to irrigate. And a farmer who wants to irrigate will only come and press these buttons. The green button is putting it on and irrigation will commence. And when they have done irrigation, which is only one and a half minutes, 90 seconds, the irrigation is done. And it means that in a day, you only need four and a half minutes to irrigate. The red button is to close or to switch off. We have the pump, which controls the water. This pump is protected, and we ensure that the security of the pump is at the center of all this. The pump inside here, manages to use the water efficiently from the tanks, this tank here, and to the greenhouse where irrigation is completed. Everything is under the support of UNDP. And not forgetting the end goal, the farmer needs the biogas digesters to enable them get the clean energy. And this biogas digesters supported by UNDP is utilized by the farmers. They get the animal dung from the animal crawl, come and put the animal dung, mix it with water, the same water that they collect from the rooftops of the rain, and they put here the mixture of the animal dung, and then it gets to these biogas digesters. And on these biogas digesters, you just need only to agitate it daily. You agitate it 15, one, two, three, up to 15. Then I move to that side, 15, the other side 15, the other side 15, and this gives uniformity in the fermentation inside the biogas digesters. When the green gas gets out, it passes through this pipe and goes into the kitchen. There's a small regulator here that allows to turn in on and off this gas. This regulator is very important. And each household is trained on how to use the biogas. And on this end of the biogas digester, 
we have a spout. This exit spout is where the waste, the excreta from the biogas, gets out here. And in these chambers, they are collected and taken to the field. So this is manure. The farmyard manure is very rich for the crop bumper harvest. Farmers take this and they regenerate the soil. And lastly, giving improved yields. When you go to the kitchen, you will see the cooking stove. And this is the clean energy from the biogas digesters. This household can take this clean energy for cooking and they can make rice here, they can make potatoes, they can cook milk, they can make tea, they can make porridge free from any smoke and good use of time in the kitchen. And they are safe with all this clean environment that enables them to improve their living standards. We are going to feed these cows. These are very good fodder. The science of feeding dairy animals is 10% of their body weight. So we take the surface area of the chest of the animals by using an animator. And then from there, uh, for example, a cow that is 400 kilos, uh, I'll take 10% of the body weight, which is 40 kilos. And that is the total quantity of feed that this cow needs to give you around uh, 15 to 20 liters of milk daily. There is an increase in milk, 62% uh, uh, from, uh, from feeding with hydroponic fodder. So you see it's, it has some economic gains. And, in, and relatively to that, we always advise farmers to feed on calendar, specific time. Animals need to have, to have specific time of feeding. Uh, this is uh, to enable them to have the psychology of conversion of uh, food to milk and even time for resting and uh, ruminating or uh, chewing the cud. So there's not any loss of energy. Mm -hmm.